Introduction to Design Patterns Here in this lesson we are going to discuss something about the design patterns. First of all, see what is meant by design pattern. Then we will discuss about the needs and types of the design patterns. that you are going to develop an application. First of all, you have to plan a solution for the problem, i.e. the application given to you. The solution plan you made is nothing but a design. The design of an application should be in relation to the architecture of your project and also a good design is very important for a successful project. If the design is not proper, then the quality of an application will not be up to the level. So you must have taken more care to design. There are two ways. Either you can create your own design or you can use an existing design. While designing and developing different applications, you can come across various problems and as a result you can find some new solutions for similar problems. To save time and effort, we can use the same proven solutions that apply to some common problems. The common problems are nothing but what we called our design patterns. The design patterns are very general and they are described in pattern templates. Pattern template can include descriptive name, information about where we can use these templates and the issues involved in the implementation of these templates. By using these design patterns the application becomes transparent. Many developers have successfully developed the software solutions using these design patterns. Note that all design patterns are reusable and can be used in any situation. The use of design patterns related to J2EE applications gives the extra advantage for developing enterprise solutions with the use of J2EE platform technologies. So we can say that the design patterns are nothing but we can study from the successes of many developers. The importance of having design patterns grow with the size of a project. Rebuilding an existing web application is never desirable. The design pattern of an application has certain goals. We will see some of them. The first one is sensibility and maintainability. The design of an application should be capable of adapting to the changes in a system. What we are saying here is it should be easy and it must be a design in which we are able to add a new functionality to the system. Division of work. Division of work is one of the important things to make a design better. So a good design should always divide work according to the skill sets of a different developers. Developers with different skills can focus on what they do best in order to work independently. This helps to improve productivity and quality. Scalability. A scalable application is one that supports many users. Portability. A portable application helps to reduce the risks that are involved in a vendor's product, which usually do not meet all the requirements of an enterprise. Code reusability. The code developed for an application should ideally be reusable within an application and also in other applications. There are many more design patterns that are available currently to use to develop applications. Here I will show you some of the design patterns that are used in the J2EE application development. They are Value Object Model View Controller MVC Architecture Data Access Object Business Delegate MVC Architecture is one of the main patterns used in the web application development. The other design patterns involving EJB are discussed in the next level. We will discuss about each of the MVC design patterns in the upcoming lesson in detail. Model View Controller Architecture MVC MVC is nothing but the abbreviation of Model View Controller. This MVC is one of the mostly used design patterns and the Model View Controller design pattern is a presentation tier pattern. Before getting into this, first we will see why we need MVC pattern. Let's take a look on the need for MVC. Nowadays, the enterprise applications need to support multiple types of users 
with multiple types of interfaces. For example, an online store may require an HTML for web customers, a WML for wireless customers, a Java Swing interface for administrators, and an XML-based web service for suppliers. Now you are seeing the picture that an application handles the various clients. So in this case, we have to develop different applications, that each one to support each type of client interface. In those applications, the non-interface specific code is duplicated in each application that results in duplicate efforts in implementation, as well as testing and maintenance. So, what is the solution for this? The answer is MVC. By applying the Model View Controller architecture to a J2EE application, you can separate the core business logic from the presentation and control logic. So this kind of separation allows multiple views to share the same enterprise data model, which makes supporting multiple clients easier to implement, test and maintain. A web application designed using MVC design pattern can be divided into various manageable modules. This modularity makes developing, managing and debugging an application simpler because monitoring a small module is easier than monitoring a complete application. In the MVC design pattern, you can divide an application into three different parts. Model. This represents information about a domain. This information can be the application data of a J2EE application. In J2EE applications, JSP typically represents the view. Controller. This one represents the logic to coordinate between the view and model parts. The controller handles events fired by the view and calls the corresponding model to process. For example, a controller may contain the logic to call an EJB component to insert data to the database when a user clicks a particular submit button in the user interface. The controller also interacts with the model and ensures that the view is updated when necessary. Also, the controller may decide which JSP page needs to be displayed once the data is inserted. In a J2EE application, servlets typically represent the controller. Here you are seeing the diagrammatic representation of the interaction between the model, view and controller components of the MVC patterns. Here, when the request arrives from the browser, then the servlet, i.e., the controller initiates a Java bean and activates the corresponding JSP to process the request and finally sends a response to the browser.